tonight to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, the sixth chapter, and uh, I did not this morning intend to, to be here tonight uh, with this message and with this particular verse, but uh, I promised to, to look tonight at, at this, and uh, as you know, I'm in the habit of always entitling my message, and I gave this one such a just a simple title, Our Father. And so I'm going to, to look tonight at the sixth chapter of, of, uh, of Matthew, <clears throat> and let's start at verse 1. So take heed that you do not your alms before me to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest do a sign on, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, you do not vain repetition as a heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask. After this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for bringing us to this time, to this point, and to this place. We pray tonight as we open your scripture that no man would see me, but see Jesus high and lifted up, and no one would see, but hear me, but hear you. Mm -hmm. Speak tonight, Father, your servant here, in Christ's name, amen and amen. You know, if you come boldly to, to the body, of, to the throne of grace, to receive help in the time of need, we must know three things. The first thing we have to know is who sits on the throne. And we must know who God is. And then we must know what kind of person he is. And so we can learn very much by, by considering our Lord's most basic instructions on prayer. And what we commonly, <clears throat> excuse me, what we commonly call the the Lord's Prayer contains some of the most profound thoughts on prayer found in all of the Bible. Now, I cannot emphasize this enough, that every word in this model prayer is important. Mm -hmm. This prayer was given away, and was given again in, in Luke's Gospel. If you turn over Luke's Gospel, and and it was given in response to a very specific request from the disciples concerning prayer. 
And you, you find it over in Luke's Gospel, 11th chapter, and uh, beginning at verse 1. And they felt something. The disciples all felt their inadequacy in prayer. And they wanted Jesus' to aid. And I thought about that when I, this afternoon, I said, how many people are in the same boat that all the disciples were? We, we think the disciples were, you know, ha had a great touch and they were, were smarter and all of these things. But they, they went through the same thing that, that you and I do. And so Jesus responded by, by giving us very beautiful uh, pattern to prayer to, to fall. So having said that now, so how are we to understand this prayer? Well, first of all, let me say that it was not given just to quote as a prayer to God, even though it's useful for this. A lot of us have experienced some beautiful moments with God. We uttered those words to him. We, we felt so special and honored. We knew that, that we were in the presence of God. Mm. Dr. Martha Lloyd Jones, some of you may recognize that name, he contends that prayer is actually meant to be an outline for, for prayer. And I, I thought about what he said about that, and, and he's absolutely right. It's to guide us in our prayer as, as any outline guides a speaker. You know, and every, every pastor has notes and they, that's where it guides them into their next soul and, and whatnot. And so prayer is really just like that. It, it guides you. Uh, and the prayer represents the, the major concerns that we may present to the Father. And... Uh, the first three petitions we see here are concerned with three things. The glory of God, His name, His kingdom, and His will. Mm -hmm. Now, these last four are concerned with, with our needs. There should always be the order of our concern when we come to present ourselves to the Father in prayer. The first thing we should do is we gather from it the, the light that it gives about God to, to whom we pray. He is to be addressed according to our Lord Jesus. Jesus said he is to be addressed as our Father. We must know that God is our Father. And there was a few scattered references to God as Father in, in the Old Testament. But there were, were very few. But in the New Testament, God is known as our Father. And uh, Jesus and our Lord, he really gave meaning to this address. You see, Jesus came from the bosom of the Father. Speaking of God as, as Father in very personal terms. So what we are admitting or affirming, if, if you will, when, when we address God in prayer is our Heavenly Father. Uh, so let's look first here at the resourcefulness of God. This address is an acknowledgement of the resourcefulness of God. The root of, of this word translated father, it, what it does, it includes the idea of originator. It points to a source, to a cause, if you will, a point of origin. God is the source. The God who is the source of our physical life is the God of all mercy and of all grace. And so as such, he is the source of our eternal life. The relationship that we have within him is at his initiative. He is the originator of that relationship. Sometimes we get to thinking that we 
saw God. No, God saw us. When, when we would never even thought of God, he was seeking us. Before we were born. Absolutely, before we were born. Every address of God as Father by a person in worship should be acknowledged by this. It is an affirmation that the relationship that each of others has with him in his work, his creation, and another thing this address also indicates that since God is our Heavenly Father, He is the one who is responsible for us. You ever think of that? Yeah. None of us would have dared push off on, on God this responsibility. But, fortunately, He Himself made it so. Since God has revealed himself as the one who accepts responsibility for us, it's not presumptions of us to bring our joys and our needs to him. So many times we only bring needs. Lord, you know I need this. I got this bill coming up and all, all this stuff. Yeah. And hardly ever thank him for what he has has done. Amen. But this is exactly what he expects and he even encourages. And a third thing that's suggested by this title of God is responsiveness. To address God as Father is to affirm that he is the responsive God of whom love, whom we know him, to be God in love. You, you, you can't say God without thinking of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to whomsoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You remember, maybe you remember that helpful word about the Father that Jesus gave. Remember, he was talking to Thomas, and he assured Thomas that he had seen me. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's John 14, 9. And I thought about that. How many times as, as he walked this earth, nobody really ever thought of him as God. And I think it's safe to assume that, that God is just as responsible to our needs as Jesus was to the needs wherever he met. If you read the gospel with discernment, I think you will be reassured that Jesus was always two things about him. He was accessible and he was responsible. And, and secondly, we must know that God is our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. The phrase that here that our Lord added to, to our Father is significant. It, it reveals some things about the God and, and whom we pray. Things that we need to, to know if we're going to pray confidentially. And so let's take just a, a few minutes and look at this position. First, Jesus is saying that our Father in heaven is surely and that an affirmation that God is separate from all earthly fathers and personalities. Now, there are some people that they very mistakenly, mistakenly, they approach God like deceased human beings in prayer. You have probably heard in one denomination or two. They select great names of the past. And they pray to God through Elijah and the, the, the Catholic Church in particular. They, they're what they call their saints. They, they pray in their, that name to, 
to God. And so it addressed prayers to them. And that is surely a mistake. There is no need to come to some mere moral again when it ain't. You ever pray to somebody who's been dead for thousands of years? When you can come before the living God himself? Amen. And, and furthermore, it, it separates him from all living thoughts. He is the one in heaven in contrast to all those here on earth. Prayer is not to be addressed to our physical or spiritual thought. And secondly, related to this is the affirmation that God is sovereign. The heavens, they were understood to be, to be the very seat of God. God is seen as, as the ruler over all things. All things are under his control. Mm -hmm. So to approach God, the Heavenly Father, is to appoint the one who has the right to do whatever pleases him. There is no other one in all the, the universe, <clears throat> above heaven, in heaven, on earth, or below the earth. No other one has this kind of authority. God only has that authority. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallelujah. we address God as the one who has the power to do whatever needs to be done. And so when we use that word Father, it would indicate that he would want to do it. But this position now it indicates something else. It indicates that he has the power to do it. There is nothing that God cannot do. Amen. There was a time when there was nothing in the world but God. And he spoke. And it was. And it was. Can you imagine that? I can imagine. I, I, I can't imagine nothing in this world but God. And he says, let there be light. And the whole world was lit up. Some of the titles that people approach God today, they fail to acknowledge this. You know, I, I get so aggravated and hurt, actually, when I hear people talk about it, they say something about that. Well, you talking about the man upstairs. No, I'm not talking about the man upstairs. I'm talking about God. Amen. This is not the same thing as saying our Father, which art in heaven. The Apostle Paul surely caught hold of this truth. Notice what he, he affirmed here in a prayer in Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. I know. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. This is a good scripture tonight. When you address God as our Father which art in heaven, this is what you are actually acknowledging. And your prayer life will grow as you acknowledge God's grace. Let me remind you of one thing. Prayer has no meaning apart from this personal knowledge of Him. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you can pray you turn blue in the face. 
God does not hear the prayer of a lost person save or save me. A lost person cannot go to God except for salvation first. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. God does not hear the prayers of most people. Great essential in a growing knowledge of God is fellowship. It's fellowship with Him, and one of the greatest means of fellowship with God is what? Prayer. You see where this leads? If you want to become more effective, more bolder, and more confident in your prayer life, then answer something. Prayer more. Pray, pray, pray. The more you pray, the better you'll know the God who answers prayer. And the more your position in his family will mean to you. You know, I hate to think, and I don't think that God favors me over anyone else. But out of a zillion and 27 people, ever how many there are that I'm just a number to God. No. You're a child of God. No. The more you pray, say it again, the better you'll know the God who answers that prayer. And the more that you pray, the more your position in his family will mean to you. And the more that he means to you, the more your position in his family will mean to you. The more he means to you, the more you will end in the experience of prayer. This will be true for all of eternity. So right now, let's go to prayer. Thank you, you pray for